Hi, everybody. I am Dana Mantilla, and welcome to 123 CMMC. And today I have a special guest, Ali Awaj with Blue Steel Cybersecurity. So, Ali, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and a little bit about your company? Sure. Um, so, a little bit about me I have over 20 years worth of technology experience uh, from data to software to security. Uh, a little bit about the firm we're a creative. Uh, information security compliance uh, focus firm. What that means is we look at compliance, cybersecurity compliance as a measure first, as our North Star. Um, and then we add all of our compliance measures as far as policy creation, uh, monitoring, uh, you name it, we sort of get into it as it uh, is required by the compliance measure. Um, and then the other side of our organization is application security. So vulnerable, vulnerability testing, pen testing, uh, we play in that field as well. Well, that's great. So you can get everybody all protected and then you can go and test it to see if they're actually protected. So that's <laughs> exactly great. Right. And yep. are you going to be getting into the CMMC world with trying to help people get their um, plan together for how to go down that road? Correct. So not only are we government contractors ourselves going through CMMC level three compliance, we're helping other organizations achieve the same level. So from one to three um, and then three above, uh, we're helping organizations focus on what they need to do to prep in order to get ready for assessment. That's great. And like I always yeah. say, it takes a village with this whole CMMC. Everybody's <laughs> got to help each other out here. Yeah. All right. So today we are going to talk about how much is this thing going to cost and how long is this going to take? So sure. our first question, how long is it going to take to get ready for level one through three? So each level, it's a little bit different. You know, level one and level two are a little bit easier to obtain to get prepped. So let's let's assume that you know you're an organization that doesn't really have any sort of policies, or anything really official, and I'll use that word quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 it's really things that you have in practice and that you can reference and document. For I can speak to level three, and I'll work my my way backwards, right? So level three. Um, for preparation and to be ready to get in front of assessment uh, usually takes about eight to nine months. And really what that means is you go through preparation to set up, uh, you know, your, your technical measures, your policies, and you need time to put all of the stuff that you set up into practice, right? So, you know, assessors are going to look for, you know, are you practicing what you have in place? Are you operating in that way? Um, and so it's usually good to have a, a, some time so that not only does you know, the upper end of the organization, like the executive management, um, understands what they have in place, but the entire organization, it's, it's culturally adult, adopted, uh, and everyone is really putting it into practice. Um, when you're talking about level one and level two, you know, level one is a little bit easier to sort of implement, so you might not need that much in, in terms of time frame. Um, I would, you know, generally say on a conservative level, it's maybe half that time timeline, which is about four months. Um, uh, and so I would say that typically from one to three, you're talking anywhere from like four to nine months. Okay. Well, you know, this, this is really important for folks to understand because a lot of maybe contractors, maybe they haven't even heard about this yet, or maybe their contract is up for a couple of years and they're well, I don't need to worry about this. But like you just mentioned, not only does it take time to lay out the whole program, you need to put this in effect. So then when the assessor comes in, just like you said, you need to show them, this is what we have been doing. We can show you, this is, this is our culture here. This is what we do. And that's going to take some time too. So I always say this isn't a test that we're cramming for. And then the assessor comes in and you're like, whew, okay, they're gone. Let's get back to our regular. This is a whole new way of doing things. So that's an excellent point about how long this is going to take because it's going to take longer than I think most people are probably thinking. Well, yeah. And I would say, you know, one, one comment to that is just that we have to treat it as a program, not a task, right? And as a program, it's adopted it into the organization. On a level three perspective, the assessor will interview anyone that, an individual employee that will handle CUI data and ask them about and reference certain policies. Um, and if the if the staff member doesn't understand or know what the assessor's talking about, mm -hmm. raises a lot of red flags, right? And so, you know, having that time to practice means, means the world, you know, uh, as far as getting your assessment and your certification process through. That's a very good point. All right, so now how much is this gonna cost us? Yeah. Beginning to the assessment. Hi. Yeah. So, you know, the good news is, is that, you know, there are a lot of measures that are coming uh, uh, from the government to help compensate uh, organizations or, you know, organizations that have to put up the cash to do this. 
uh, there are measures or ways to receive that money back, right? Um, and that's through either indirect costs when you're going after a contract, there's um, other measures. There are a lot of state grant programs that um, if you're doing preparation, and, and I'll speak towards preparation first, you know, typically for level one, level two, um, it should be, and you know, don't quote me on this, it's a range from $2,500 to you know, $8,000, depending on who you go with. Um, level three is, is where it gets a little bit more expensive just because there's a lot more controls and, and, and uh, policies that you have to create. Um, and typically that starts anywhere from like 12 to $20,000. Um, you know, again, grant programs are there to help offset some of the preparational costs. I know in Maryland, there's a great program um, and every state has something where um, as a requirement, if you're an organization that needs to handle COI, um, they'll help you offset the preparation costs. Um, typically what ends up happening then is that once you go through preparation, um, for level three, you would have to have continuous monitoring. And what that really means is that you have to have measures in place that are putting the controls into practice. Um, you know, cost ranges vary, you know, I, and it depends on the size of your company. A lot of uh, vendors usually come at a price per user model per month. So it's a subscri subscription model. Um, and those typically can be anywhere from, you know, $1,000 for really small organizations all the way up to like $30,000. Um, you know, rule of thumb, when I'm taught, when I'm thinking in level three, right, if organizations are ready for level three, typically it's about three resources, security resources, um, as far as cost, if you were to do this internally, you know, minus um, any of these like tool subscriptions that you would have to pay for. Uh, level one, level two, quite honestly, um, because the controls are a little bit, are a lot on a smaller end, um, you know, off the shelf stuff um, uh, suffices to be able to put into practice. I would say, you know, one of the key components that you don't want to neglect um, is on training, uh, awareness within the organization that's important because um, you're going to start with level one, level two, eventuality is you want to get to level three. That's where everyone's going to go, especially when you're ha handling sensitive data. Mm -hmm. uh, now, assessment is a wild card. No one knows, because no one's really technically gone through it. So the scope of work for that is still being determined. Um, I can tell you what I've been told and what I've been told, and this is unofficially, it could be anywhere from 5,000 to like 150,000. Um, I think, I think FedRAMP, uh, three PAOs are a good, uh, measure of, uh, uh, something to sort of benchmark from because if those companies are doing FedRAMP, you know, there's a lot more controls, so it's a lot more expensive, but if you look at the cost there, you can kind of do some work, some, <laughs> some head math there to kind of figure out where the assessment costs are. But, you know, again, that's, that's the wild range that we're, we're that's being talked about right now. Wow. That's quite a range there. That's yeah. uh, but like we said, this is a cultural change within your organization. So it's a program, not a you know, testogram for us. So, yeah. okay. So now the big question is, well, is this going to apply to me? I'm just a subcontractor. Do I have to do this? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you from experience, right? So, you know, we we as an organization have won our own subcontracts with with primes, right? And so, um, of course, the prime would have to uh, be in compliance with it. Um, where it comes down to, in the sense of the subcontractor, it really um, the, the, it, it's sort of it's a it's a question that the sub would have to ask themselves as, as far as competitiveness, right? because you know, typically, if you think of if you're a technology vendor. Uh, subcontractor and you're working on, let's say, software, uh, something as simple as requirements. So like, what, what does the software need to be built out? What are the specs? Uh, that could be considered CUI. Um, I know we ran into a scenario where a PowerPoint presentation had CUI data, right? And if we weren't necessarily ready or prepped for that, um, especially if that requirement came into play officially, um, it would be a scenario where we wouldn't be able to participate in, in a, you know, a meeting that handled CUI data. Uh, or receive that information, right? So, um, you know, from my perspective, I think it's up to the business owner. Um, I, my personal opinion is that it, uh, it's a competitive thing, right? If you have it, or you go through it, um, you're more than likely to make it less of a burden with the, the prime contractor to interact on the project. Um, you know, they most likely will go with something that's easier, right? Rather than something that's more challenging. Um, you know, and the final thing I would say to that is if you're not compliant, most likely it would be up to to give you the environment uh, in order to meet compliance and not not all primes will necessarily do that. So there's something to keep in mind. 
Yeah, and then the other thing too is that if the primes are going to be held responsible for the um, subcontractors, the, then the issue comes into play. They're just going to say, well, listen, I'm not even going to deal deal with you if you're not already, because I'm not going to take, assume that responsibility. So you could kind yeah. of be putting yourself out of business in that competitive world here. Yeah. All right. And then our final question, is this just going to stay within the Department of Defense? I would say no. Um, and you're already starting to see um, hints of that, you know, with this whole uh, pipeline issue, um, you know, with the White House executive order, you know, there's pieces of, of requirements that are within CMNC are, are popping up here and there. Um, I know that GSA is starting to incorporate a lot of uh, CMMC um, requirements within uh, their organization and, and how contracts are, will most likely be issued. Um, I, I honestly think it's a model that um, we're going to reference now, whether or not it becomes a full you know, full fledged, you have to be CMMC level required in order to participate. I'm not sure, right? Um, every agency has its own methods of how to adopt these principles and practices. But um, if there's a model that exists and there's a lot of funding and a lot of resources going to it, chances are it's probably going to stick around and uh, it's easier to adopt something in, in theory than it is to create something on your own. Yeah, and I think also, you know, you think about this is the world we live in now, the digital world of having to protect. We have to do something. So whether it's the exact CMMC model or not, the government is going to absolutely be requiring different agencies to do some kind of um, cybersecurity. So that's something everyone should keep in mind. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Well, thank you very much for all of your input. I really, really appreciate well. that. And again, let me just let it right up. You need to get in touch with me. You can send me an email here, dmantilia at Identity Protection Planning. And if you would like to contact Ali, there is his email address and talk to him about maybe helping you out, getting ready for CMMC. So thank you very much everybody for your time. We appreciate you uh, listening to us and we hope that this helps you give a little bit more confidence that you can do this. You can get that CMMC uh, certification done. So good luck and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.